Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Jackie Brown Riddick. We're going to be discussing her amazing memoir, More Than a Conqueror. Now, it's available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. And people, before we go any further, I do want to quickly point out that Jackie was brought to our network, People of Distinction, by one of the best advertising firms in the business, Author Reputation Press. Now, listen to me. If you're a writer out there listening in and you have a work of art that you've created, although you find yourself at a crossroads because you need help moving it, well, I have the answer for you. You need to contact ARP. They're one of the best in the business to do it. And this is what they specialize in. Their team is standing by to assist you. Head on over to AuthorReputationPress.com today and gather all of the ways that they're going to help maximize your creative endeavors. And listen, it is an absolute honor to have Jackie here on the line. Now, the moment you start to do some research on her book, More Than a Conqueror, you understand what you're getting ready to partake in. Now, I mentioned it already. It's a memoir. Now, what I love so much about memoirs is the fact that we understand people, listen, once you get to a certain age, you get that adversity and challenges are just a part of life, okay? And you, you listen, I know for me, when I'm going through some moments of adversity, I want to avoid it at all costs, right? The last thing I want to do is work through it, but here's the benefit to it, right? And I'm sure a lot of you listening and can relate Through that experience, you then acquire wisdom. Well, that wisdom makes you stronger for the next. And this is what I love about memoirs because people, it doesn't always have to be your particular experience that wisdom derives from. Now, this book is a gem. It's filled with so much wisdom because it's coming directly from her life and things that she's learned. And one of the underlying messages is about hope. Having hope through adversity, but not only that, relying on that village and that support system that you have around you. It took me probably much longer than it should have to realize that 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 village that I had around me was was really what I needed. And and I'm not going to go into too much detail here. This is not about me. Okay, This is about Jackie. This is about her life story. But I remember distinct moments where growing up as a teenager, as a young adult, thinking that I, you know, I had it all figured out and I could do this all by myself. And it wasn't until, again, maybe much later than it than it should have been, but it wasn't until much later that I realized I didn't need to do it all myself. Right? I had the wisdom of those that were around me to help break down some of those barriers. And I had the wisdom of those that came before me that told me things years ago that when I was a hard-headed teenager and a hard-headed young adult, you know, I put it in the back burner. And luckily, I was able to have that to pull from in later years to help me get through some of those toughest moments. And at the end of the day, this is what I want you all to do. Sit back, strap in, and have your notebooks ready, because I promise you, you're about to receive an education from Jackie. And by the time we've concluded here today, you're going to run to Amazon and Barnes & Noble and purchase your copies, because you're going to realize how valuable of a resource this book actually is. But don't take my word for it. Take hers. It's her life. She's lived it. It's her book. She's written it. And she's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. Jackie, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today? Thank you so much. I am so excited to be with you. I am doing great. Wonderful. Well, listen, Jackie, the pleasure is all ours, okay? We are very much looking forward to this, and just as excited, I think what you're doing here is special and I think what you're doing here is needed, right? As I mentioned, memoirs are are very important because we're able to learn so much. Now, because this is a memoir, we're going to learn about your background as well as your book. So, Jackie, without further ado, let's jump right in. Tell us about your book and those words okay. that are on the pages, More Than a Conqueror. Well, thank you for the great invitation. 
this is a book of hope. Even the title itself that says more than a conqueror, because so many things happen during the course of our lives from the time that we're little itty bitty kids all the way up through adulthood. And in the process of all of it, we have to know that we can overcome whatever challenge we have, whatever obstacles are in front of us that we can overcome and come out looking shiny and beautiful and just full of glow and just full of joy. Mm -hmm. So the, the theme really Benji is to keep hope, to have hope, to keep hope and to move forward through the hope. I love that. You know, I want to go to inspiration next here, Jackie. And listen, this is your life story, right? So I think I can assume why you felt compelled to write the words and to put it out for the public. But you know what happens when you assume, Jackie? So I'm not going to do that to you. I have you here on the line. Let's go directly to the source. What made you feel compelled or inspired to write this book? I had it in my heart for, for quite a long time to just write about the love that I have for my mother and how much she inspired my life Mm -hmm. from the time that um, I was very young all the way up through adulthood and just being a part of intricate part of my life. Family has been, um, even as you talked about that community, that village, My family has been that community and that village for me. So there were times, you know, when everything is all about play, when um, it was all about play, the village was there. There were times when it was serious and it was about discipline and learning. Those times the village was there still. And the village keeper or the gatekeeper, I would say, was my mom. She was just full of love. She was full of joy. She was full of energy. And she had a laughter that was so amazing and everything. And she taught me not to um, internalize everything, you know, not to take everything to heart, not to um, allow myself to be hidden in emotion, but to allow myself to, to walk in joy and to walk in happiness and to make life a little lighter Instead, it, instead of being heavy in the process of things. Mm. So I enjoyed my childhood. I was a, a little child. I was mischievous, Benji, I was. <laughs> and along with my, my sisters and my brother, we were always getting into little things. But we grew up in um, a community where the adults were responsible and they watched over us and they were allowed to make corrections in our lives and to nurture us. And because of it, it inspired me to be a nurturer as well. It inspired me, Benji, to to encourage the youth and, and other adults and to make others feel like they can do great things too, that they are more than conquerors. Hmm. You know, Jackie, first and foremost, I love the fact that you pointed out that you were a mischievous child, right? I mean, listen, the first step is denial, <laughs> people, and she was there <laughs> to to put it out there, right? So that, that's how you know we're yeah. working right. Now, Jackie, next question that I'd love to go into, and, and you know, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's almost an unfair question to ask because it's so broad, but I feel like I would be doing my listening audience a disservice if I didn't ask it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it out there and please try to entertain myself and my listening audience here. But we know that your book, More Than a Conqueror, there's levels to it, right? And and there's so much that you have been able to learn on your journey when it comes to, no pun intended, conquering adversity that we face. Mm -hmm. For any of my listening audience members out there, and again, it's very broad, so I know it's unfair to ask because, of course, when we're talking about adversity, it's as unique as the individual. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. But for anybody out there listening in right now that finds themselves in a dark place, finds themselves working through something, and they're out of answers, right? They're they're out of Mm -hmm. pathways to travel, to try to accomplish that. What are some words of wisdom that you can offer that maybe you acquired through your journey that you can help shine a light on their dark path? 
Well, Benji, the very first thing I would tell anyone is to breathe. Mm. Breathe. Catch hold to your breath and just breathe. Take a moment to just breathe. Because so many times we are so overwhelmed by different things. And I can remember even as a, a young child just being, as I said, busy and mischievous and everything. And, and sometimes when I would get in trouble with the adults and things of that nature and I have to deal with it right where I was as a child, it feels like sometimes you're so overwhelmed you're going to lose your breath. It feels like I, I don't think I'm going to make it out of this moment. Yeah. I don't know how I will. I, I feel like I'm going to die almost right here in the midst of this. The easiest thing to do and the best thing is just breathe. Just take a moment to catch hold to your breath, and then you can gain some perspective and breathe slowly and deeply. And it allows us to come out of the the heaviness of the moment. I can remember even in my, my teen years when I would feel overwhelmed because teenagers are overwhelmed. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that they're facing. There's a lot that we have to deal with. We have peer pressure and we have the pressure of school itself. We have the pressure of wanting to be amazing, to be liked and loved. And then we have our grades. After all, that is part of it. And we have school itself. All of that just can be so overwhelming for the teens. I tell them to breathe. It is so important to breathe and just to relax so that you can gain some perspective and just settle in for a moment. But it doesn't stop there, Benji, because then we grow up, we mature, we go on to college, we have jobs and things of that nature, and everybody's always expecting so much from us that it continues to be overwhelming, but breathe in the midst of all of it, breathe. Mm -hmm. And then marriage. My husband and I have been married for, we married as, as um, we were high school sweethearts. Wow. And we, um, yeah, so we, we're celebrating this year, Bindi. We're celebrating 40 years of marriage. My goodness. And so in the midst of it all, you know, you find your challenges, you find things that you have to deal with. I, I'm, I was a military wife. My husband was in the military there. We had to deal with war and the threat of wars. We had to, I had children during that time. I had to raise them. I was working. He was away. He was home. He was away. He was home. But Jackie had to learn to breathe. It would be so overwhelming, especially, you know, at different times, because as a military wife, many times our husbands are away for special events and things of that nature. So it's like you're losing track of time almost mm -hmm. with each other, but you have to gain your perspective to get it all back together. And you have to breathe in the midst of it. And my mom taught me that she's my inspiration that even when things are seemingly to be going great and you're so excited about life and what's going on even still you can be overwhelmed at the celebration you've got to take some perspective take time to get a perspective and breathe and then benji there come those times when um when the pressures say, you know, the demanding pressure says that we're not enough, we start feeling like we're not enough for whatever is going on, whether we're young or older or whatever, we start feeling like we're not enough. We've got to get our perspective in that and know that there is still hope, that there is still a way that we are still more than conquerors because sometimes we really have to get out of our heads to see who we are, and we've got to breathe. We've got to breathe so that we can gain our perspective. And then in the midst of all of that, Benji, there's life and there's death, there's birth. And, and in the process of it, we lose loved ones. We lose those that are so dear to us. Jobs change. You know, you find yourself in different occupations. We had you know, COVID that changed our lives so dramatically. There are so many things that go on in life, Benji. But the the greatest thing that we have to focus on is learning how to breathe. 
so that we're not overwhelmed by all of it. And once we take a deep breath, we can start realizing, Benji, that, hey, I am enough. Hey, I I can make it through this. Hey, I know that was terrible, and I thought I was at my my wit's end. I, I, I thought the waters were coming over my head. I thought that I would panic, and I would just give up in the midst of it. But I made it through. And I see the light now at the end of the tunnel. I lived through it. So I'm here. And I made it. And guess what? I'm more than a conqueror. So, breathe. You know, listen, people, could we have selected a more perfect embodiment of a person of distinction to be on our network? I mean, my goodness. What she just stated although it seems on the surface very simple, is profound. Because, again, for anybody out there listening in right now, if you have done that in your moments of adversity, you understand how beneficial such a, such a simple notion as, as just breathing can be. And how it can just, I mean, from a physical standpoint, from, from a literal standpoint, slows down your blood pressure. Right, allows you to just come to a calm state. And then from that position, you're able to start to see things clearer. Right. uh, Listen, you know, I remember speaking again from, from my own perspective. I remember at a very early age, one thing that I learned and I'm so glad that I did is when I was facing moments of adversity, I got to a point where maybe, listen, it started probably as a defense mechanism and something that I was just utilizing and kind of faking till I made it. But then it became a way of life. (laughs) And dealing with moments of adversity, I understood that there are, well, maybe I didn't understand it. Maybe I didn't understand it at first, but I eventually got to the point where I understood where there are no wins and quote unquote losses in life. So even in your moments of adversity, there are things to be gained. And if you're able to shift your perception, you can recognize that there's a silver lining in everything. And I learned that if I shifted my perception that way, while, as she stated, while breathing, because that's the only way you're going to be able to stop and see it, you can take the wisdom out of those unfortunate circumstances. There aren't wins and losses in life. There are wins and then there are lessons. And if you can educate yourself through those moments of adversity and receive those lessons, you're able to build from that. I love what she's saying here, people. I know you are as well. And I know you're like me. You're already heading on over to Amazon and Barnes & Noble to purchase your copies because you understand how valuable this is. And here's the best part. We've barely scratched the surface. I mean, there is so much left to be discovered. And that's why you got to pick up your copies of More Than a Conqueror. Because you understand that you too are more than a conqueror. And you have a lot to offer. And you're not going to let those moments of adversity defeat you. I love this. I love what this book stands for and what it symbolizes. People, this is not all, okay? I could sit here and I could talk to Jackie for hours because I'm that much engulfed in everything that she's saying. This book has so much to offer and I have a whole host of questions that I wanna just continue to lay on her pertaining to it. But I have to keep reminding myself, like Benji, this is not about you, okay? We gotta stay focused here. (laughs) As we look to the future, people understand that more than a conqueror is just the beginning. Because Jackie has more on the horizon. She has another book that is still in creation at this moment. So you can't get it just yet. But you're going to want to check back in frequently to Amazon and Barnes & Noble to receive it the moment it becomes available. Now, as we start to close out of this fantastic interview, Jackie, please go into that next book and tell us a little bit more about it so we know what to expect. Thank you so much. I want to just share a little bit about military life and being a military wife. And that because military, the military is so dear to my heart. My husband Mm -hmm. was in the army 
and both of my sons joined the army for um, a time also. And it is important because people don't, outside of military life, don't understand the sacrifices the military give to yeah. make the country great. They don't see the sacrifices. They don't see the men leaving their families to go and not return to their family for weeks or months at the time, or God forbid, if there's a war or a situation, they're gone for six months or a year at a time or even longer. They don't understand the the plight of the wife and what she's dealing with in her um, while she's by herself. And in the midst of all of it, our female soldiers that we have and the sacrifices that they make and as being mothers and going off to um, to war, and they have husbands who are left behind as well. There is so much sacrifice that is given that is overlooked because we uh, are an extension of the military, ex- being an extension of our spouses. But we are still trying to make it ahead, trying to keep our families together. And then when our husbands finally come back or our spouses finally come back, then we have to readjust and readapt to to life all over again. And I want to salute the families. I want to salute the military because they are so brave in what they do to go and to sacrifice their lives for however long they they choose to be in the military. And to those brave soldiers, I'll call them, the spouses that are left behind to keep life running and to keep life moving and to give them the normalcy when they finally get the opportunity to come back home to their family, that they come back to love and we try to make it a smooth transition, but while we're trying to make it smooth for them, we're dealing with our own issues. And even in those issues, we have to find our strength. We have to find our hope. And I'll tell you, Benji, we have to learn to breathe even in that because otherwise there's so much that's going on while you're trying to keep life together that things are constantly happening and things are constantly going on. You, Once you have children, you're trying to keep the children in school, trying to balance life yeah. as, um, as a single. At the same time, you're not single. And at the same time, you're not trying to keep it single because you know that you're a part of a whole and you're trying to keep things just in harmony constantly. And it's so much pressure that's on the individual that's that's just discarded. Many times people don't think about that great sacrifice. And I really would like to honor the spouses of the military. Mm. So that'll be my next endeavor. You know, Jackie, thank you very much for articulating that in the fashion that you did. And people, you know, I often... I often meet military representatives. And of course, what's the common phrase that always comes up the moment you meet any of them? Thank you for your service. And I remember, (laughs) I remember one representative that I, that I met recently, you know, and I said that to him and then instantly I had to stop and apologize because even though, of course, I'm thanking him for his service. I also, I also understood that, a thank you is not nearly good enough for the amount of sacrifice mm. that they make. And like Jackie is saying, it's not only from the military representatives themselves, but also their families have to make the sacrifice and their families are going through it. And I I am so I have not served, but I, I have family members that have and I have a lot of close friends that have enlisted and have served. And I can tell you, people, listen, I mean the burden that the families carry as well as the soldiers. Oh, I mean, there's moments where it feels insurmountable and it is something that I, I love the fact that Jackie is now taking the opportunity in writing a book because it's going to showcase so much and it is going to bring awareness to something that I think again, oftentimes when we see 
And we, meaning a generalized we, of course, when we see military representatives, we always say that common phrase, thank you for your service. But what does that really mean? Are we truly comprehending what that service means and the sacrifices that they're making, not only for this country, not only for our freedoms here, but also the sacrifices that they're making and that their families are making? I mean, that's profound, man. Listen, people, my goodness, I'm a talker, okay? And I, I, I get to these points where I have, to, I have to prevent myself from talking because I just want to keep on going. I'm going to say it for you again. I know I don't have to, but I'm going to re-impress it for you one last time. We're here on the line with the magnificent Jackie Brown Riddick. We started off by discussing her amazing memoir, More Than a Conqueror. Available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. There's another book on the horizon. Check back in frequently. Pick it up the moment it becomes available. Both of these books are wonderful resources to add to your shelf, but I'm going to go a step further. They're even better gifts to put on someone else's. So you know where to go. Head on over there today. Pick them up and just get lost in them. And you can thank me later. Jackie, this has been an absolute delight, a true honor. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. Thank you so much, Benji. Thank you. You have been a delight. You've been helpful. I really appreciate you. You are spot on. 